ladies and gentlemen, there are people out there. Um, rarely I've been described as sexy, but uh, there you go. Um, I woke up, oh well. Except by my wife, obviously. And she has to. Right, my name is Jeremy North. I'm the... Uh, <laughs> Stay focused, By the way, Jeremy. the time hasn't, st <laughs> time hasn't started yet. Um, I'm the chairman, believe it or not, of the Dearman Engine Company, and we are a serious business. Uh, we are developing um, certainly the world's first liquid air engine, uh, piston engine, designed by a gentleman in his garage in Bishop Stortford some years ago, and we are taking it to market in a serious way. Uh, very quickly, the process involves taking uh, 700 litres of air, taking the heat out of it, taking it down to minus 200 degrees, 700 litres becomes one litre. If you then, um, you can store that in a, uh, in a Dambian pressure. If you then re-add the heat by means of mixing the liquid air with a fuel exchange, uh, heat exchange fluid, then you have the opportunity to expand it back 700 times. If you do that in the confined space, you get pressure. Therefore, you can do work. And to do that work, Obviously, there are two things you get out of it. Um, one is power and one is cooling. Um, won't therefore surprise you to discover that the first, ap first of many applications that we're looking at uh, and expect to bring to market is a transport refrigeration unit. This really addresses a uh, global market which is very large and growing. Um, at the moment in the world, there are about 2.2 million refrigerated vehicles, about 650,000 in Europe, and the market's growing at between 10 and 15% per annum. Uh, in the Far East and in the developing nations, it's growing considerably faster. Um, China, for example, expects to have a 12-fold growth in the next five years. One of the reasons that uh, this is significant is that the world has concentrated on um, uh, regulating the front, uh, the, the main engine of a refrigerated vehicle very substantially. So a Euro 6 engine, which has come out recently, is a very efficient engine, relatively speaking. Um, However, the small donkey engine that powers the compressor for the refrigeration unit is not a very efficient engine, and it emits, in absolute terms, six times more NOx than the, um, the engine that pulls the vehicle around, and 29 times more PMs. Not such a big bit, uh, deal, perhaps, in the UK, where our, um, our, our air is reasonably good, but a huge issue if you're in China, if you're in Jakarta, or in Mumbai. The other thing is that the, uh, the reefer unit uses up an awful lot of fuel, something like 20% of the overall vehicle's consumption. So we've had a look at this market and said this is something we can do. We've built um, a small engine that is currently in, uh, in testing. We've had a lot of uh, simulations and modeling done to establish uh, payback times, and uh, E4 Tech, who are um, our partners on this, are, um, have, have calculated that against the 40-foot reefer for uh, chilled and refrigeration transport payback is actually two and a half months. Right? That's not years, that's months. And against an existing uh, liquid nitrogen evaporation system, which uh, is being tested by, uh, amongst others, Marks and Spencers in this country and a large fast food chain in Malaysia, um, the payback is under a year. Uh, this slide is wrong, only because it's a sales projection and therefore it's bound to be wrong. Um, what we can say, it's a very large market. Um, we believe the market will, um, will continue to grow as the world urbanizes and um, populations become more affluent. Um, the coal chain in uh, India is um, expected to grow by 12, bil 12 billion pounds in the next five years, um, and China, uh, similar growth. In the EU, something like 10% per annum, as I've said. The stage of uh, development we're at is we now have a test engine in our uh, test cell. That's been operating now for three months. Uh, we are in the middle of an IDP8 program, which is funded by the TSB. That is a uh, collaboration with Air Products and Myra. The engine for that will be uh, completed by the end of March, handed over to Myra. They will install it in a vehicle, and that will be running around their test track in July. And, um, subject to space, you're all very welcome to come and have a look at that. From there, we expect to be in field trials with between five and ten vehicles with a major UK supermarket, possibly two, by the end of this year. Um, that field trial we expect to run for uh, around six to nine months. Sorry, that's is that the... Um, that's one minute. Oh, I didn't see that. Um, <laughs> um, once, the, once the field trial is completed, then we will, uh, we will go into larger demonstration trials 
and we expect to be in low volume production by the end of 2015. In terms of funding, we're funded now through the end of September this year. We're in the middle of uh, closing another funding round with our, uh, our investor group. We're funded by largely high net worth individuals at the moment, about 50% in the UK and 50% in Holland. Um, once we've completed the, uh, the first stage of this, we will be moving on to a larger engine. This engine is a, an eight kilowatt uh, single cylinder engine, and we have plans to start the development of a 40 kilowatt four to six cylinder engine in the, middle of, uh, in the middle of this year with the aim of having a mule vehicle ready for, for uh, development by the end of uh, 2015. I think I've undershot my time, um, but uh, I'm sure you can find something to fill it with. Thank you very much. Thank you.